Hey guys, Tony here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. I have a really special video for you today and I'm really excited to present Brian who is the owner of one of the room tours that I recently did on my channel. Brian's room tour has brought in an incredible 460,000 views at the time of recording this video which is absolutely insane for my channel. It's the second ranked video on my channel and we thought what we'd do is we'd get Brian on because the community has had such a positive response to his room and we'd get him in and answer some of the questions that you guys are asking down in the comments section. So I'd like to Welcome, Brian. Welcome to the video. Hey, Tony. Thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun. Awesome. Thanks for being here. So let's get straight into it. And I'll just mention briefly, as I said in the introduction, that your video has brought in an incredible 466,000 views at the time of uh, this video. And it's also brought in 27,700 hours of watch time, <laughs> which equates to around 1.66 million minutes. So if you can imagine one person sitting down for 1.66 million minutes straight watching your room. So that's a lot of eyeballs on your video, um, which is incredible. incredible. Yes. Yeah, so well done on such an awesome room. Um, the people that watch this video, you'll see the comments as well, how amazed they are with the final product. It's just turned out, um, you know, as something that people are aspiring to. I know myself, I actually took some inspiration from your panels and I actually put put that into my own room. Um, slightly different, I've got it next to my screen, but the concept was really good. So if you've inspired me, I know that there's a lot of other people out there that are inspired as well. So before we get into the burning question of how much did it cost? Because that's the number one question. I'm gonna save that to the end. Why don't you go over your journey and how you got into home theater? Sure. Well, a lot of it came down to uh, just being stir crazy during the pandemic. You know, I'm sure your your part of the world was locked down uh, as well as mine. And in Oregon, I kind of joked on the video, I said, sunny Oregon. And I think only one person really picked up on that because it was kind of a tongue in cheek thing. It's raining in Oregon all the time. You know, well, summers are nice, but at this particular time, everything was shut down. You know, we couldn't go anywhere, do anything, and it was pouring down rain. So we couldn't even really go outside. And I was just losing my mind. And at the same time, I was kind of talking to my wife about, I need a hobby and I need it quick. And um, that's when I kind of got turned on to your channel. And it really resonated with me because it combined a lot of things that I love, design, tech, um, you know, entertainment, great video audio quality how to tweak things to get it just right and really have a diy um you know background to it and so um all of those things i was like yes this is what i want to do and so my wife said well how much does it cost and i said we'll get to that and so um <laughs> you know we we were building a house at the time too so we were actually in a rental during the house construction and i had the benefit of having a contractor that was just entertaining my crazy idea about this because actually this theater is above the living room. So we're on the second story here. And this was supposed to just be an attic, just storage. Um, and I said, hey, I have an idea. How about it? How about I turn it into a, a theater? And a uh, contractor, her name's Kimberly. She said, uh, well, tell me more about that. So I shared some CAD drawings that I'd figured out. You know, I was just learning CAD. I mean, all of this is just learning. Everything was, how do I do this? Um, so I learned CAD basic, you know, lines and dimensions and I showed that to her and she said, yeah, we can frame that out. It wouldn't be too big of a deal. We're already framing it anyway. So why not just you know do this and throw some drywall up and call it good. So um, I was really excited about that. She let us come in and rewire or not rewire, but she let us add speaker wire and pull everything. And um, that was awesome. Came to find out uh, later though, uh, that I needed to redo all of that. So that wasn't as awesome. So once the walls went up, I had to come in, pull all everything out, and then rewire everything uh, with better quality cables. And so, you know, just kind of getting back to the the channel, I was learning a lot of stuff through the videos that you were sharing and what to do, what not to do. A lot of people uh, had questions about dimensions and screen size and how immersive and how close and how close is too close, you know. So I was just, uh, you know, I was drinking from a fire hose for a long time, but I loved it because it's a, it was a hobby for me and it really distracted me from everything else going on, um, you know, and so finally got to get in here. And once we moved in, took a few months to just kind of take a breath and figure out what do I really want to do? What's the design going to look like? What, um, you know, what's the equipment going to look like? And what kind of budget do I have to work with? Um, and so that's kind of where we landed is, uh, budget. And I know that you wanted to get into that at some point, 
but uh, we could keep going with other questions or whatever you want to do. Yeah, sure. Let's discuss the process. I know you gave kind of a bird's eye view, but let's discuss the process that you went through because it may give people that are new to the hobby a bird's eye into how you come up with a concept and how you deliver on that concept. Well, the process for me started early on with Pinterest, really, and just searching home theater. And I started there. What kind of design really resonated with me? What kind of screen size? Did I want this to be something where it was kind of a lounge with, you know, couches? And did I see my kids being in here all the time and having, you know, like big parties in here? Or did I want it to feel more like a theater vibe, you know, with a very limited seating, how we've ended up here with six seats? Um, and uh, have it very, very focused on the screen and not so much like a hangout space. And, um, you know, so through Pinterest, I was really trying to nail down the aesthetic and the experience and how much space I had to work with until I really labeled, I really um, narrowed in on kind of like a mid-century modern vibe. And you saw a lot of that more and so in the, in the lobby than you do in here. Um, but, you know, the thing that resonated with me uh, a lot in looking at other people's theaters is that I tended to really enjoy the simplicity in the design. And I know some people, when they look at their theaters, um, you know, they want to put um, all of their action figures or their design or their movie posters. And, and I think that stuff is really cool. But for me, I'm not very good at that stuff, coming up with those levels of detail or things that, you know, a lot of color and detail and stuff like that. So. I thought maybe I'll just create like the screen will be the hero and the rest of the theater just like I turn the lights off like I don't you know the speaker covers are on the speaker so you, I'm not showing those off or anything everything's very clean and simple lights go down and I'm just focused on the theater or I'm, I'm focused on the screen and so that simplicity really resonated with me so once I had that aesthetic and I had the idea of like okay it's going to be six seats and we're going to do a riser um, and I think I remember in one of your videos talking about how uh, you had had six seats or you had, you actually removed some seats because the reality was that it wasn't getting as used as much by your kids, you know, or just people coming over as you thought maybe it would be. And we've definitely seen that too, but we have a big family. So a lot of people will come. We're actually having the opposite problem of, you know, the kids want to do a sleepover and they want to invite their friends. I get kicked out, you know, because there's just not enough room. Um, but that's fine. They, they love it. And so uh, taking that all into consideration, then the next step was kind of identifying, okay, what's the screen size, the quality, what, you know, I still have a long way to go. And we can talk about this later of just things that I wish I would have done differently or would have done at the start. Um, but, you know, I was able to work with a theater consultant that just kind of helped me identify some hardware for the budget I had some you know a projector for the budget i had what I, what i was going for and that was super helpful just kind of having somebody walk alongside me to say you need to think about these things and um but the whole process like i said was drinking through a fire hose like every step of it you, i mean you've said it before like you can you can go down this rabbit hole as deep as you want on any aspect i could spend hours just looking at screens and trying to figure out what kind of screen i want and that's just you know one one hundredth of all of the things that are going on in this room so um it definitely kept me busy and i was grateful to have a project that was distracting me from just everything else going on um but it was overwhelming at times too um you know and asking my wife for her feedback and we have a very different aesthetic she's very light and bright and i'm not and so the rest of the house is just light and bright and I was like, I need my room, my space. I'm going to make it dark. I'm going to make it moody. I'm going to do the textures that I want and all that. She's like, whatever. I don't, you know, as long as you stay within budget, um, which I did. So, uh, you know, that, that, um, that process was really difficult because you second guess so much of what you're doing because I've never done it before and I want to do it well. And so I'm just like, is this the right color? I don't know. Is this the right screen? I don't know. So a lot of it was, I kind of like this, but I'm not feeling very confident about it. Um, so I was very insecure going through this whole thing. Um, so it's really cool to come back full circle and post, you know, just the, the whole process and the result and see that a lot of other people resonated with it as well. Because 
somebody like me, you know, it's like, ah, I just don't, it works for me, but you know, I don't know about this or about that. Should I've done this differently? Um, and I'm sure I will do some things in the future a little bit differently, but I'm really happy with where things have arrived. Yeah, that's excellent. And it, it definitely has resonated with the community that can be seen by the sheer amount of comments and views that the videos had and the amount of questions that we get. Um, so that would lead us into the next question is, um, if you'd like to discuss some of the AV choices that you made, so projector screen and AV processor amplifiers, uh, and any other gear that you think that enhances the experience. And of course, um, speakers as well. This is where it was uh, again, really an insecure sort of decision because there's so many options and I was really overwhelmed. Um, so I really leaned on my, um, theater consultant to kind of help guide me based on what my goals were. Um, the, I, it's a screen innovations slate. Um, the screen is a screen innovation slate. Um, I went with a 2.35 um, aspect ratio and um, it's a very thin, I know you can see in the, if you watch the video, you, it's a very thin trim line. So very, very minimal. Um, and I don't know if that was a good thing or not, um, but I could have gone bigger. And that's the number one thing. I thought I was going bigger uh, because originally it was like 120 inch or something like that. And I think I ended up doing 130 or 135. I don't remember, but this screen now, it feels like I, I should have gone bigger than I did. Um, so number one, I wish I would have gone bigger with the screen. Uh, it's a big screen. So somebody walking in here was like, oh, this is you know massive. But for me, I'm like, ah, I could have, could have been bigger. Um, you know, and my wife just shakes her head with everything. I'm like, isn't this great? She's like, whatever. <laughs> if you're happy, that's fine. I hear you. Um, it's universal. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, so I have, uh, two subs in the front. Um, they're Bowers and Wilkins. The whole speaker setup is Bowers and Wilkins. Um, I've got four Atmos at top. I've got two, uh, 12 inch subs the side speakers and then three fronts uh, and two rears. So uh, see, I don't even, I can't even think, what is that? A 7.2 seven seven dot two top four. 7.2.4, two dot four, yeah. Uh, and I wanted to go with more speakers than that. I wanted to go with 9.3.4. And the guy's like, your room's not that big. I was like, I don't know what that means, so. <laughs> I shouldn't tell you what I'm doing in my room then. I'm doing 9.4.6 now and my room's smaller than yours. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, but okay. anyway. It's not about me, this is about you, but I just thought just to alleviate some of your concerns, don't worry, you haven't done overkill. That doesn't exist in this hobby. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I've got, I've also has, uh, I have bass shakers on each one of the seats. And so I've found that I've been able to tune the subs and the shakers uh, appropriately to where it just feels right. I get the right amount of kick, um, but I always feel like I could use a little bit more bass and the whole riser is a base trap. I think you mentioned, you mentioned that in the video before. I don't know if that makes a big difference or not, um, but it was just something that I had seen online to absorb a lot of the vibration down into the riser and spit it back out the front. Honestly, I couldn't tell you if I capped all those holes, if I would notice any difference. So, you know, some things you learn, I, I, I don't know. Um, as far as the rack goes, I think I wish I would have done a taller rack just for, for future space. I have um, an Anthem, uh, what is it, an AVR 940 or 941? MRX, um, MRX 1140? Sounds right. <laughs> I think from memory, MRX 1140. You know more about my theater than I do, but it just goes to show like I'm very, like very new to all this. And I, uh, I didn't understand the reason to have amps in addition to a receiver. And that's where I'm stuck now is, um, you know, I've asked some people on, on the Discord server what they thought, but um, I feel like my sound is, it feels a little tinny, a little boxy in the room. And I don't know why that is. It's been tuned and um, I don't know if it has to do with not having enough power and just using that receiver to push to everything, I, I don't know. So that may be the next area that I explore is do I need more, do I need to bring in some amps and is that gonna make a difference to give it just a more full sound than it is right now? Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. So yeah, I, I, <laughs> I think that like in my case, I went with a Trinov, which is just a processor and I have three separate power amplifiers and that really unlocked the potential in my room. I mean, it sounded great before, but what, 
the power amplifiers have done is just added a lot more detail, especially in the top end, like the high frequencies is just, you know, really detailed sound. But that could as well have something to do with the fact that it's a Trinov altitude. Now, Anthem that you've got is also very highly rated. And I've tested Anthem in this, in my room, and it sounds fantastic. So I dare say you could even just buy some power amplifiers and use the pre-outs on the um, on the anthem just to test it out and see if you like it, and then you could trade that in and go with something like an AVM seventy or an AVM ninety. But that's only if you feel that you're going to be getting the benefit. I mean, that amplifier I believe should be more than enough to power your setup. But again, it's what you were talking about earlier, where you could just dive into a rabbit hole in any specific area, and you can just be completely consumed by it. Like for me, it was speakers and processor, which is where I've spent a lot of my money and I'm running an Epson projector. So people are saying there's a bit of a disconnect between the projector and the sound. But for me, the video is fine. I just wanted really good audio. Um, in mm -hmm. your case, I mean, it's it's a matter of experimenting, but a lot of these experiments come with a with a dollar cost. And that's yeah. that's a lot of the problem. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I think if I could encourage anybody that's going through this process, it's really to try to keep the main thing, the main thing. So when, when they're designing their theater, trying to just outline, like these are the top three things or so that is most important to me and realize that it's a marathon, not a sprint. And you don't have to get it all right from day one. Just find the things that are most important to you, try to do those well, and just kind of know that you're gonna continue the process of building in um, I mean, some people look at my theater, they're like, this is the in game theater, right? But for me, I feel like, man, I've just got a lot of learning and work to do. And, and I want to try new things. And, uh, you know, that's what the hobby is, is just seeing what else is out there. Technology is going to change, you know, how I approach design or even lighting or whatever, my preferences are going to change over time. And so this is sort of an evolving project for me. Yeah, I, look, I look at your room and yeah, I'd be very happy to have a room that sort of looked like yours at the end of the day. And I think that's the case for a lot of people that have watched the video. Um, and the other issue with the hobbies, like, as you said, never ends. Like I'm planning upgrades now. Like people think I'm crazy. Even um, my friend Mick from Sydney Hi-Fi, when I told him, he's like, you realize you don't need this. You don't need this. He was emphatically telling me, you don't need this. I'm like, I understand. It's just one of those things that it just never ends. And it's something that you're always going to, going to be wanting to improve upon. Um, but like I said, your room is as close to as a complete project that I've actually seen in a home theater um, environment. It looks like a professionally built theater room, um, but it's not stuffy. It's not pretentious. It's just really comfortable. The aesthetic, the vibe, it just, yeah, it's an amazing looking room. And that was why you were literally one of the only few people that I've actually approached to do a room tour on. Um, most of the room tours that I do, I don't like to impose on people and say, hey, I want to show your room to the internet. Normally people approach <laughs> me and, you know, I don't want to impose myself on them. But in your case, I was like, oh, your room just looks awesome. I've got to show it off um, to the community. And it was a big hit almost from day one. So what's the experience like for you? Like if you could sum up the experience, like what was it like, like say watching Top Gun Maverick or another movie? What's it like for you, the experience of having a home theater in, in your home, basically a private movie theater it's incredible um you know I, I may sound like oh i'm just not happy with it that's not the case at all i'm really happy with the, how the theaters turned out and um you know on rainy days like it, it's been this week here up in oregon um you know to be able to just come up here you know for an hour or so and just it's been a day you know and um i just need a little bit of time you know some people like to take a walk and right now I've torn my ACL and my MCL and my meniscus. So my left knee is shot. So I can't do that. Um, so the way, the way that I'm sort of relaxing right now is I'll just come up, throw on something. Uh, and I've become like a snob when it comes to like, if it's, if it's showing like 1080, you know, HD, I'm like, never mind, you know, and <laughs> forget it. Um, but no, I'll, I'll come up here, you know, I, I'm using home assistant now, so I've got it all set up to, you know, the, the shades, everything drops. So I just, I'm like, ah, oh, I just need 30 minutes to come up and everything is quiet in here. It's calm. 
just throw something on. I just always enjoy being in here. I don't even need a reason. If somebody's like, hey, uh, I got a quick phone call. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just go up in the theater. It's nice and quiet up there, you know? I can't say enough great things about just having this. It's It's been such a cool thing for me and for my family. Um, but it's also just been a way for me to not be, you know, driven crazy by pacing around the house. And I'm not driving my wife crazy with like, hey, you wanna, wanna go do something? I'm feeling pretty bored. She's like, I've got stuff to do. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, totally. I can relate. I can relate to a lot of that. Um, so why don't you tell us some of the things that you think that you really nailed in the room? Like some of the things that you look at and you go, I got that right. Like that's just turned out really well. Well, uh, in the lobby, especially, I was really happy with how the bar turned out, um, how all of the I did baseboard lighting. I think you showed that in the other video. I really like how coming into the theater, the the soft close mechanism, auto close mechanism on the door and the push plate. That just all seemed to make a lot of sense to me. Design wise, I love the sign. So I I did the I designed a logo for the theater because that's just what I do. And I brought that into a sign and some napkins. In fact, I've got here's one of the napkins right here. Yeah, it's very too. cool. Very, very cool. Yes. Um, so just those little touches, I feel like were, just made it special um, to us and personal. I really love the carpet. I know some people are like, you should have gone dark. Um, or you should have done this. You should have done that. And that was one of the points I agonized over because they do have a darker version of this carpet. But I, I absolutely love it. I think it's just so unique to a theater and really brings along that mid-century modern vibe. I really love the seats. I am so glad I went with these uh, Valencia seats because they are so comfortable. Um, everybody loves them that sits in them and they just hold up. Like they are just such good quality. Um, so glad I went with those. What other things? I think the lighting, I really love the the lighting that has been done all around. Everything is smart lights, you know, depending on if a movie's playing or not, the, everything changes, you know, to make it just more comfortable. And I hit pause and the step lights come up and you know, just so like some of the lighting and automation there, I feel like just was, uh, it was exactly what I was hoping for. And then the acoustic treatment, I, I didn't know much about it and still don't, but I feel like I put a lot of acoustic treatment in here. And as soon as you walk in, I think you've done this too on your um, on a video, you walk in and it's like, you just get enveloped in this silence, this deafening silence. And I feel like this room just feels different. You walk into it and it just feels like you're in a studio or, you know, a theater. And so I feel like, yeah, those things, I, I would think, I would say I nailed it on that. I'm really happy. I don't think I'll change that for a long time. Moving along to what you may have done differently, because I know you mentioned a few regrets, including the screen, but maybe just touch on some of the things that you would have done differently, which could be things for people to consider when they are going through this process? Well, I don't know how much flexibility people have with this. I would have, from the very beginning, uh, I would have put this in a basement or a more accessible place for friends if I could have. Early on, we could have dug out um, our basement and we just chose not to, but this would have been perfect for that because it feels really weird for people to come up upstairs into sort of like, you know, everybody's bedrooms you're walking past and stuff to come into a theater, it, it just feels, it feels weird. Whenever I have friends come over, you know, it, it just doesn't feel like it's very accessible to them. So I would have put it somewhere else, number one. Yeah, the screen, number two, I think I would have done a, a little bit differently. I would have given myself better climate control in here. I didn't realize how warm it would be. I have one vent in here, but the problem is that, you know, with the Google sensor, it's great, but the rest of the house, it's all on one system. So you're trying to cool six bodies and a projector down in here, which gets really hot. And all of a sudden the rest of the house is freezing cold. And so I wish I would have been able to figure out a dual system here, maybe a, a mini split. I don't know if you guys have those or not. Uh, we do. In Australia. It's okay. Australia. So it's uh, very hot in this country, as you can imagine, like it gets super yeah. hot. <laughs> so we, right. we live so on air conditioning all the time. Okay. So you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, the climate control, I wish I would have done a better job with that. I think I wish I would have just in that same vein, I wish I would have put um, an intake somewhere around the projector to just see if I could pull more heat away. So I've upgraded that I've upgraded the projector. Um, it's still uh, it's still a Sony, but now it's the the latest like 4K laser that came mm -hmm. out. The guy that I was working with on it, um, we were having so many problems with the iris clicking and stuff. And it was apparently a common thing. 
uh, he, that Sony just took it back and they upgraded me. Uh, I mean, I had to pay for the upgrade, but they were just like, yeah, let's just, we'll just take it back and we'll, we'll work with you on it. So the projector was a big one. I, I, I was happy with the project projector that I had until it started to cause problems, but the new laser one is just phenomenal. So I don't know if that was a miss or not, because I, I've heard so many great things about the JVCs, but at the end of the day, I, I'm really, really happy with the, the picture quality. What other things would I have done differently? I'm just kind of looking around thinking, I don't really like the way that the acoustic panels just kind of float off the wall because you can kind of see the foam on the sides. Maybe I would have done that differently. I would have cut out a bigger area for over here is where my, um, my slide out rack is. Um, I would have cut a bigger hole there for a bigger rack, measured it differently because the acoustic panel doesn't fully cover that, but the, I have acoustic paneling over that rack that helps a lot with the sound. But I also think honestly that I would have, I, I was really obsessing about the rack being accessible from the room. And so that's why I cut the hole. I don't think it's that important. Honestly, in retrospect, I would have just put it in the closet, not cut the hole and just left it as is because it was just it wasn't necessary. I think I, I overthought that one for sure. It does look cool though. I will say like from a nerd perspective or geek perspective, <laughs> I thought it was really cool how you can just pull the rack out inside the room. If I could do something like that, I would, I mean, but like you, I was suggesting I put my rack on a different, in a different room just to keep it separate uh, for heat and noise yeah. and things like that. But yeah, I think it was pretty interesting how you were able to cut the hole and have it all meshed really nicely and i think that's the thing with your design is every element in that room just seems to have a purpose and it all blends really well together and and it's not like this is like from a different this is a different look and this is a different look and this is a different look and this serves a different purpose everything just seems to work and i think that's the cohesion is something that i think people appreciated when they watched the video so uh, uh, thank you for that insight. So let's move on to the next one and let's talk about the cost. That's the elephant in the room here. And I can't believe almost every single day uh, because your video gets around 5,000 views a day. Like that's on average uh, new views a day, um, which is pretty <laughs> crazy. And every day at least we're getting one person asking, but how much is it? But how much is it? So I guess that's what spurred the, this video. So I don't know how much you're comfortable with sharing. Um, I know your wife will probably be watching this and maybe getting the calculator out and trying to work out uh, how much uh, you actually did spend. But if, but yeah. yeah, why don't you um, break down a little bit about like from a macro point of view, the budget that you came up with, how that may have changed over time and where certain things um, drew the most money and possibly where you might have funneled some of that money into to sort of give you the best bang for your buck, so to speak? Well, like I said, we were building the house at the time. And so the sale of our other house, you know, we had a little bit, we had made a little bit of money from the sale of that house that gave us a little bit more flexibility to, to build. And so early on, I knew that I had a little budget. And as the project got bigger and bigger, I convinced my wife basically to, to let me get a loan, basically a, a home equity line of credit. And so, you know, a lot of people, um, uh, a lot of people will look at my room and they'll say, oh, you know, the, be, must be nice to have, you know, so much uh, just to be rich or whatever. And I get where they're coming from. But honestly, um, this is a loan. I took out a loan to be able to do this. And that's OK, because, you know, some people will buy nice cars and they'll you know, or they'll work on a car and they'll put all that money into it and they have a budget for it. And that's that's what they enjoy doing. Um, some people do other things like it, it, a hobby is a hobby. And granted, you know, I think I had a lot more budget to work with, uh, because we were fortunate in how we sold our house. But at the same time, um, this was not accessible without working with the bank. So <laughs> I don't want people to think that I came into this and just was like, let's just do it. I don't care what it costs. You know, that wasn't the case at all. Right. So I, I, I definitely wanted to do some things really, really well and other things I probably could have budgeted better on. Um, honestly, after seeing my neighbor's projector, he's just got a real basic, um, nothing special, but the technology's come such a long way. Uh, it's so fast that I could have probably gone with a much cheaper projector and saved quite a bit of money and been just as happy. I think the quality is pretty decent on just what I've seen from him. Probably could have not gone with so many speakers and 
trimmed budget there, or I could have, uh, you know, the, the receiver. I, I was going off of recommendations from my theater consultant, and I didn't know enough to say this is better because of this or that. So I went with his recommendation, but it, you know, it was a pricey receiver. There were definitely a lot of things that I didn't do that I, I cut out, like the, the amps. I just felt like it was just too much too soon, like the, DV, or the, the uh, Blu-ray UHD player because I thought if I do that, then I'm going to start buying discs and I don't want to get into that world quite yet. That seems expensive. And that is um, the byproduct of buying a, a disc player. You will start buying yeah. discs. It's part of the course. Yeah. So I didn't want to go down that path. There were some things that I wanted to, to, to spend money on and, you know, the carpet, <laughs> I think you said it was a big ticket item and it was, uh, this was definitely, it's like a wool blanket basically that that's a carpet. Um, and it was really pricey. Um, Can you share some of the costs or do you not feel comfortable telling us ballpark figures for how much each of these things cost? Because I think a lot of people might be interested to know, okay, the projector cost this much and the carpet costs this much. But if you don't feel comfortable giving exact amounts, even just a ballpark rough figure would be, I think, helpful. Sure. Well, so the projector, I think, came in around 12,000 US. Um, the the carpet was probably close to 3000 um us and for this size room it's not a very big room that that's pretty price per square foot it's pretty high um i had somebody install the carpet because i don't mm -hmm. that's not my sweet spot yeah um you know i had somebody build the bar for me um who was just a um uh, does a he's a you know carpenter does really, really great work. Um, he was pretty new to the starting his business. So he gave me a good deal. But I think, you know, even the bar cost, uh, I want to say it was like 2200 or something like that, uh, 2200 US. The receiver, I think came in 2000. And then we had a, a sub amp as well as the butt kicker amp. So those were two different. And I think the, the combined cost on those was probably close to three or 4,000. I could go, I, I kept a list of, of everything and, you know, I could always post that in the notes later. I don't, I don't mind that people. Yeah. It's only what you feel want. comfortable with sharing. It's, uh, it's obviously budgets, a personal thing, you know, people will have their own opinions on it, but it is helpful for people to understand. I actually did a video breakdown myself. I'll, I'll leave a card up above if you're interested in seeing that. I have done a split between Australian dollars and American dollars just so people can get a rough idea. So for example, then you've also got the seating. So the seating would have mm -hmm. probably cost a fair bit as well. Yeah, the seating was was pretty pricey. That was another big ticket item. But again, I was so glad that I did that because I felt like I had seats in my last house that were were okay. But after about a year and a half, they looked great, but they just wore out really fast. Mm. And I think I had spent like three thousand dollars on those on those four seats, and I, you know, maybe spent five or so thousand, uh, four to five thousand on these seats, and I can just tell they're going to last for years. Um, and so I was happy to make that. I felt like that was a good uh, a good spend, a uh, good budget item. Oh, look, I'm a brand um, ambassador for, for Valencia, so you won't hear me saying anything bad about Valencia. So. You won't complain about it. No, I, well, I, I, love, I love Valencia. Yeah, they're great. Um, I think in total, I, I ran, um, I ended up being just north of 60000 on the whole project. And that was with me and my dad doing a lot of the work ourselves. And I think that that's, you know, some people have asked, well, what does this cost? And um, it really depends on, it's like, well, it depends on what you're going to do and how much of the work you're actually going to do. So the only things that I didn't do are the carpet and the bar and everything else my dad and I were able to, to handle ourselves. So uh, I think that made a big difference too. It, it probably shaved you know, maybe 10,000 to 12,000 off the cost if you had a contractor come in and have to do all of this themselves. Because there were quite a few man hours that went into this, as you can oh, probably imagine. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you were sharing a lot of that on the Discord server. And one of the other cool things that you've done and what we've done as well in the video is we've put a list to pretty much everything that you used in the room. And there's links mm -hmm. to Etsy and a few other things as well. So people can actually go on there and, and use your actual products and things that you've put into your room, um, which I think, and, uh, and quite a few people have commented that's been really helpful. So guys, if you want, yeah. check the links in the description of this video, because I will also include um, everything that was in Brian's room tour in this video as well, so that you can go and check out some of the things 
that he's used in his room and some of the things that have inspired a lot of the community out there. So again, Brian, uh, thank you very much for sharing all of this with us. Um, there's a lot of nuggets of wisdom in there, especially for someone that has been new to the hobby and then to come in and execute a room the way that you've done. It's just been an inspiration to everyone out there. So I'd like to thank you for being part of my channel and part of the journey, as well as Discord community, sharing your information and your tips and tricks as well with the community has been very helpful. So are there any final thoughts that you might have before uh, we wrap up the video? I really think to just re-resonate, um, you know, don't, if you feel insecure about making a decision, you're probably on the right path because that's what the DIY journey is all about. And always know that you'll, you'll, you'll probably, you'll be happy with some of the decisions you made and probably wish that you would have done things differently in, in other ways. And I think that's just a natural part of the process. So don't agonize over that too much and just realize that it's a, it is a journey. Like this is, if you're not enjoying it, then find something else to do because this is supposed to be fun. And uh, it's also supposed to be something that, that creates a hobby, something that's exciting. Um, and so I can't stress enough, just like go into it knowing that you're not gonna know everything and that's okay, because that's part of the journey. Absolutely, well said, Brian. Well, I'd like to thank you again for being part of this video and being part of my channel. And for all of you who watched the video, if you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think down in the comments section. I'll have plenty more of these videos coming very soon. I also have another guest that I'm trying to coax into doing one of these videos. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video. But guys, thank you again for watching, but that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.